Okay. This is uh, chapter six in chemistry. And I'm just going to go over this uh, worksheet. Um, and uh, chemistry has a lot of memorization, so there's a lot of these that I won't know the answer to. Um, so I'm just, but I'm just going to go over it and answer the ones that I, I do know the answer to. So questions one through eight, it wants you to classify each of the following ions as a monoatomic cation or either a monotonic anion, a polyatomic cation, or a polyatomic anion. Now, one thing that helps to know, of course, is if the cations are positive, the anions are negative. Cations are positive, the anions are negative. <clears throat> and you have to have a way of remembering that. Uh, <clears throat> so that before you've got it memorized, you'll be able to remember it. Okay, first one says, oh, I'm sorry, CR3 plus, that's chromium with a positive 3 charge. <clears throat> that's monatomic, and it's uh, a cation because it's positive. Chromium is a metal. Okay, the second one is chlorine, Cl minus. <clears throat> That's minus one. <clears throat> Chlorine is a halogen <coughs> in the seventh column. Okay? That's monatomic, only it's an anion. Number three is mercury, Hg. Only on this one is two, and it's plus two. Okay, mercury is a metal. And in this case, you can tell that this is um, polyatomic because there are two of them. So I'm going to go with polyatomic cation because it's positive. Okay. Number four is SO4, two minus. This is a sulfate ion. I remember that from high school chemistry. Sulfate, that's part of Sulfuric acid. It's H2SO4. It's got hydrogen and sulfate. Okay, this is obviously polyatomic and it's going to be an anion simply because it's negative. Okay, so this, these were not terribly difficult, but this is just kind of a warm up for different chemical ions. Okay, ions are important in ionic compounds. Okay, so let's go to number five NH4. Minus. This is the, uh, I'm sorry, an H4 plus. This is an ammonium, ammonium ion. And this is obviously polyatomic, and it's a cation because it ends up with being positive. Okay. Now the other examples of positive up until this point have been metals. <clears throat> this is obviously not a metal. This is just <clears throat> an ion with a bonding inside that ion. <clears throat> it's not necessarily ionic bonding. Uh, it's just that overall you end up with a positive charge. Now in this particular case, <clears throat> in this particular case, you might be able to see that uh, nitrogen, if you look at nitrogen on the pyrrhic table, uh, nitrogen, this would be an example where the uh, nitrogen Nitrogen's position on the periodic table could put it down as a uh, as a negative three. If you were, if it would want to have um, three electrons, and if you give it a <coughs> four hydrogens. If each of those was a plus one, for example, you would end up with a net, a net of plus one. But that's not a, in general. You, can, you in general you cannot do that. Like um, yeah, so we're not going to get in, we're not going to get into that any more than we already did. All because we're just going to answer that as a polyatomic cation. We can't explain 
on all of these sorts of things. You can't explain them all as necessarily ionic, although in some cases um, they would be. Okay, S2, 2 minus, or that's sulfur. And um, this sulfur is uh, obviously a monatomic. Okay. Obviously, one thing that's very helpful uh, <clears throat> is the uh, periodic table. Periodic table for um, these <clears throat> particular elements that show up here normally do take an ionic form. <clears throat> they either give up a certain number of electrons, one or, one or two, or or, or three, or they, 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 they tend to grab one, two, or three electrons, okay, and become negative. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> so this is kind of a dividing line. When they're on this side, they're going to give, they, they want electrons, and on the other side, they tend to give away electrons. Okay, this one is obviously a monatomic. And it's going to be an anion because it's negative. And you can see where the sulfur is. It's right below the oxygen. So uh, it's nice to have a periodic table because it's hard to memorize all of these. And I had forgotten some of these exactly where they show up on the table. And this just gives you a nice refresher. Sulfur is also in column six, just like oxygen. Okay, and then the next one is sodium. And that's plus. And that's because sodium is a alkaline metal. So it's monatomic and it's a cation. Okay? So, yeah, can't quite see that down there, but I, but I can see it. Okay, so we're going to erase that. We are, <clears throat> did all those. That's just practice. <clears throat> now, the next section said, give the systematic name or write the formula for the following ions. Okay, and um, this is harder. This requires more memorization. I won't know. There's a lot of these I don't know the answer to, and I'd have to, I have to look at the answer key to get it. Okay, that one is just potassium. Potassium is uh, right there in the uh, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium. It's an alkali. This is a potassium ion. Okay, and that's what they mean when they say give the systematic name. Uh, second one, I is for iodine, and iodine is a halogen. That's negative one. That's a negative one ion. So you could call that an iodine ion, but I notice here they call it iodide ion. So you know that's just the form. That's just the uh, <coughs> this. That's the name that this particular. <clears throat> convention uh, in, uh, of uh, the IPAC has given them these official names. And if you use these frequently enough, then you'll, you'll come to, to, to remember that. I, I probably would have just called that iodine ion, but iodide is, is more correct. Okay? Next one, PO4. Okay, and it's 3 minus. I recognize that as phosphate. Uh, I think a lot of Oh, you get a lot of O fours, and the sulfate was like that. Uh, in the first section, we had a, ma a magnesium MnO four. That was permanganate, and it, that also ends with ATP. But anyway, phosphate. I, I recognize this as phosphate. <coughs> it's a phosphate ion. Obviously, all of these things are ions. It says it, it tells you right here that they're ions. So as that happens to be a phosphate ion, it's negative three, but that's not critical. <clears throat> that's something that you need to have on a reference sheet. SO4, we already talked about that. Now, I was about to write negative two, they say two minus, but it doesn't really matter to me where the plus sign goes or minus sign. It's, it's, a, it's a negative two charge, but you put, according to the convention of the way you write it, they, they, they're having you put the negative sign after the two which is fine. That's a sulfate ion. Okay. Next one, sulfur. Two minus. Uh, this was actually mm, a 
polyatomic anion, and um, it's sulfur. I don't know exactly actually what the correct name for this is. Let me look at the answer sheet. It's called a sulfide ion. It's like the iodide. Uh, sulfide. Okay. Now, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got myself confused. That is not a polyatomic. That is, see, I got confused from the two. Uh, when the two is down below, that means you have two sulfurs. When the two is up and above, it's just the charge state. So, because of my <clears throat> haven't used chemical notation in a long time, I got thrown by that. Somehow I'm thinking that there are two, two, um, two sulfurs. There's not. That's just one sulfur. So yes, it's just the sulfur ion or sulfide. The ide ending ide uh, is reserved just for a single one, or so it seems. That's something I had forgotten. Okay, next one, chromium three plus. Okay, now. I believe this is called hmm, chromium. Yeah, it says here that the correct name is chromium-3. That's because chromium, uh, now you can see it. It's one of the transition metals. And you can see here it's listed as 3, as plus 3 or 3 plus. Yeah, you probably can't quite see that down there. Let me see. I can give this a little bit of a boost. And then it makes it a little bit higher. But it, it still might have to zoom in to try to actually read it, but I can see it. Yeah, the answer sheet here is calling this a chromium-3 ion. Chromium. And then the 3 is the so-called Roman numeral 3. Uh, and they put it in parentheses. And they call it, and, that, and that's this is the so-called answer to this. But um, on this particular chart, they don't list 2 two valences, they only list the one of them. So if there's only one of them, you wouldn't have to do that. But chances are that the chromium will also appear as plus two, even though they don't have it there. And that's that's the logic behind putting in the three. Now putting in the three there, it doesn't do any harm, uh, even if it wasn't absolutely necessary. Okay, chromium. Okay, let's go to the next one. That's chlorine. It's uh. So I'm going to say that this should be chloride, okay? And it's just one single chlorine, so it's, it, the, the ending should be IDE. Chlor... Aside from the fact that I'm not very good at spelling, chloride ion. The ion is redundant because everything we're talking about here is going to be an ion, okay? So I checked the answer sheet. That's correct. Okay, this one now is mercury. There, now there are two <clears throat> atoms and the total charge is two. Okay. Now what is the correct name for this? Uh, you could call this mercuric ion or mercurous ion or you could call this di, dimercuric because there are two of them rather than just one of them. Honestly uh, let's just look up on here. Mercury is listed as having either a plus two or having a plus two with uh, with two mercuries. And to be honest with you, I, I didn't really know. That's news to me. I didn't I didn't really remember the different states for mercury. And what they're calling here in the answer sheet, they're calling this either a mercury one ion or also known as mercurious ion. So two possible answers. Mercury. one because the charge state on each mercury here is one because it takes two of them to get plus two okay that is the so-called mercury one ion and in, apparently there's no mention of the fact that there happen to be two of them i don't know if you could call that dimercury but anyway they say that and the other one they say is mercurius ion now, this makes sense to me because I can see that the other possible valence state that's listed is a plus two, and this is a plus one. So um, when there are two valence states possible, there are two endings. One is the IUS, and the other one is the IC. 
and I call this, this is the ick and the us ending. And the ick is always reserved for the higher valence setting. So Mercury 2 plus would be the ick setting. And Mercury 1 plus, or you might just say the plus, would be the, the us setting. So ick is higher than us. That's something that I remember from high school. For some reason, I've never forgotten it. And that's why this would be the mercurious ion rather than the mercuric ion. Okay. Now, let's go to carbonate. It's a different one. Carbonate. This one, if you don't have this memorized, it's hopeless. So here, hopefully, you'll have a reference sheet. A carbonate. I happen to remember this. I believe this is CO3. And I think it's a minus 2. But uh, this is a good memory aid for these is to learn common household chemicals for which these are part of them. And this particular one would be sodium bicarbonate. It's baking soda. Uh, and everybody knows baking soda. This is baking soda, okay? <clears throat> also known as sodium bicarbonate. Now, if you look, it says in the ingredient sodium bicarbonate, but it does not actually give um, the chemical formula. But anyway, I happen to know that uh, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. And uh, if I look at the answer key here, I can see that the carbonate uh, is a, in fact, it is minus two. So just as a little example, sodium bicarbonate means CO3. There'll be two of them. That's the bicarbonate. And this is going to have, each of these is negative two. So this is going to be a negative four. So, so the formula for sodium bicarbonate would have to be Na4CO3 taken twice, sodium bicarbonate. And the reason why it's written like this it's not written as C2O6, although that would technically be valid. But the reason it's not written that way is because it, the way this is actually formed is there's a carbon uh, with, that has oxygens uh, bonded. And, and, and that's a unit. That's the carbonate unit. And when you form sodium bicarbonate, there are two of these units. So the way they, they try to use a formula so that they give you some idea of what the structural compound is. So anyway, check, 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 check me up on that one, okay? Check me up on the formula for sodium bicarbonate. See if I got that right. Okay, I, I, I could easily make mistakes here. Okay, chromate ion. Well, it's going to involve chromium. And I'm going to guess that it will have an O4. And what is the net charge? Honestly, I'm not really sure. Let's check the answer key. Chromate is a CrO4, and the charge state is 2 minus. Okay. Oh, chromium is listed as a plus 3. Okay. But yeah, you can't really tell the charge state of this chromia of this chromate ion. Um, Because this is not necessarily ionic bonding inside there. Okay, we don't know how that's going to work out. Um, technically, if, if this were a chromate, if that were a, a plus three, and if oxygen was a minus two, you get minus eight and plus three, you'd expect to end up with a minus five, which you're not getting. So that's just an example of how that doesn't work. Okay, but anyway, chromate ion. Okay, the next one is a chlor chlorite. C H L O R I T E. Okay. Now, that's like uh, chlorite, uh, chlorite, well, I'm going to guess that this is Cl minus, okay? Uh, chlorite, that's like, uh, no, my mistake, totally bogus. That would have been chloride. Chloride would have been a single ion, uh, a single uh, chlorine. So this one I got totally wrong because <laughs> I... Uh, I'm not sure if I ever knew this particular one, but apparently 
a chloride ion is ClO2. So you need a, a reference guide for this one. And um, I, at least I would need a reference guide. And it happens to be a negative one. Okay. And why it's a negative one, once again, we don't really know because this is not ionic bonding in here. Okay. So that just has to be memorized. We need a reference sheet. Okay, the next one is hydrogen sulfide, sulfate. Hydrogen sulfate ion. Well, we know the sulfate. That was SO4. That's a 2 minus, okay? So you're going to have to have two of these, okay? Two hydrogens will balance that off because this, the bonding here, oh, I'm sorry. No, this is, this is an ion. This is not a compound. It's a hydrogen sulfate ion. Huh. Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, honestly, I don't know. It might be HSO4. H2SO4 was that would actually be a compound. This is an ion. So maybe it's HSO4 minus 1. I'm not sure. Let's check the answer key. Ah, I got lucky. It is HSO4 minus 1, and that's because... I knew it couldn't be H2 because that wouldn't be an ion, okay? So HSO4 is a hydrogen sulfide ion. So what happens is if you take hydrogen sulfate and you put it in a water solution, what happens is that separates out to an H plus and an H2 and an HSO4 minus. And this, in solution, this is what makes the acid sulfuric acid. It's a very powerful acid. And these are two ions. One of them is, is the hydrogen. That's just a proton, a hydrogen nucleus. That's an ion. Okay, hydrogen sulfate ion. Okay, next one, perchlorate. Perchlorate. Okay, the plur, 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 plur chlorate. Now something tells me this is going to be a, a C because it's chlorine. It's a chlorate, so it might be an O4. Uh, the per, I don't think the per does anything. It's just like the permanganate. And uh, I'm just going to say maybe it's a minus 2, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see what the answer key said. The answer key says it is a ClO4, but it turns out it's only a minus 1. So I got that wrong. Okay, hopefully I'll have a reference sheet for that. Okay, hydroxide on it. Uh, yeah, perchlorate. I don't know if there's a common household item that has that in it. There, there might be. Uh, hydroxide. That's, I think, a good way to remember these things. Is by A lot of these common things show up in, in very common household chemicals that you find in your medicine cabinet. Okay, hydroxide ion. Okay, this is the famous OH ion. OH, and it's a minus one. Hydroxide. Uh, H2O can be an H plus and OH minus, okay, uh, if it splits up. It doesn't split up very much. Uh, if you have water, maybe only one in every, uh, in equilibrium, uh, an equilibrium solution of water at room temperature, there'll be a certain number of the hydrogen, of the water molecules that are actually broken off into two pieces, but only about one in a million or, or, or one in a billion or something like that. Hydroxide. Let me just check the answer key. Hydroxide. I got that right. I, I kind of did that. Okay. Nitrate. Nitrate ion. Oh, this is, forms the basis of nitric acid. Uh, nitric acid is is HNO3. I think the NO3. I think that is correct, and I think the NO3 is a minus one, and then I think that would be the nitrate. Ion, a little different than the sulfate where it was O4, the permanganate where it was O4, the carbonate. Oh uh, yeah, the carbonate was also an O4. No, carbonate was an O3. Yeah, and this is also an O3, so you just have to remember that. This is the nitrate, H HNO3. That's nitric acid, very common in a chem lab, but not quite so common in uh, in a household item. Uh, hydrochloric acid is common in a household. Hydrochloric acid, I have some downstairs in the garage. So you can use it a lot for cleaning concrete. 
Uh, that's called HCl, hydrochloric acid. Put that in water, it splits up into an H and a Cl minus, and that's a very strong acid. Okay, let's, okay now dichromate. Dichromate ion. Okay, here's the, the Di comes in. That gives you a clue that there's going to be two of these. Now, how many O's there are? I don't know. It's uh, I kind of cheated. I think I saw the answer key. I think it said seven, but I never would have come up with that. Yeah, <laughs> seven. While I was looking at the other answers, I noticed that. That's a two minus. I totally wouldn't have known that. So I'm not sure what sort of a common element, that, a compound that that would be in, that I am. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Write a chemical formula for the following compounds. Okay, a binary compound consists of lithium, plus and O minus two. So this would be an oxide of lithium. And, and this is going to be an ionic bonding that we're concerned with. So it, this is really simple. We're just going to neutralize these charges. So you're going to have two lithiums and one oxygen. Okay, and we're, we're not going to, um, you don't put the charges in anymore because it's neutral, they neutralize each other. I'm going to check the answer key though because I, I don't want to officially say anything which is wrong here. And I'm not 100% sure on some of this stuff, so I, I'm going to be checking the answer key. Okay, some of them I am 100% sure on. Carbon monoxide. Okay, that's CO. This is very famous. We had a guy here in Massachusetts, killed himself, and there was a big trial, a suicide trial, because he was in his car with the engine running, and he died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay, that gets into your bloodstream, and then um, it, you will, will uh, you'll die because it prevents the oxygen from bonding to your hemoglobin. Okay, next one. I'm not going to write all these down, so I can save time. Nitric acid. I already that already came up. That was HNO3. Okay, the NO3, the nitrate ion is minus one. The hydrogen is a plus. Those cancel out. HNO3 is the formula for nitric acid. Now. When this is actually added to water to form the acid, this splits up to an ionic solution. But anyway, it's still called um, HNO3. You still call that nitric acid, even though it's really just a molecule. It's not an acid all by itself. It's not an acid until you put it in the water. Okay, the next one is called chloric acid. This I don't actually know what chloric acid is. The only thing I would guess is hydrochloric acid, but I look at the answer sheet here and I see that this is actually something else. This is HClO3. So this is an acid uh, that uses ClO3. I didn't know that ClO3 was not an example that they gave us. They had a ClO2 that they called chlorite. There must be a ClO3 that's known as chlorate. Yeah. Okay. And this is chlor no chloric. Chloric. ClO3. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not familiar with this acid. I wouldn't get that right. Okay. Dinitrogen trioxide. Okay, this is just a dinitrogen, so that's pretty obvious. It's going to have two nitrogens, and the trioxide is that it's going to have three oxygens, so that's a giveaway. Uh, that's what you call a very self explanatory way of giving the formula dinitrogen. Sometimes, I guess, when you write it out, sometimes they'll put these the di or the tri. In there, that tells you if they didn't have that, let's just say they just said nitrogen oxide. This is definitely a nitrogen type oxide, but there's probably more than one form of nitrogen oxide because uh, there's laughing gas. I believe that's just NO, nitrous oxide. Anyway, so this dinitrogen oxide uh, is going to be a N2O3 almost certainly. Yep, okay, next one. Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, that's calcium. Okay, we already talked about carbonate because we talked about the sodium bicarbonate. This is CO3. Calcium is plus two. We can see that right over here. 
That's an alkali earth, alkaline earth uh, element. And uh, calcium carbonate. This is uh, calcium carbonate is what you'll find. Uh, chalk. Chalk is calcium carbonate. It's limestone. Uh, chalk comes from limestone. It comes from the shell of uh, animals in the ocean. Shells. Their shells are made out of calcium. And your bones are made out of calcium. Okay, calcium carbonate. Okay, let me just double check. Yeah, got that one right. Okay, sodium hydroxide. I remember this one from high school. It's NaOH. This is the hydroxide ion, which is a minus one. So when it combines with sodium, it's going to <coughs> sodium is plus one. That's an alkali <coughs> metal. <coughs> sodium hydroxide is very common. Um, it is a common material. It might be, uh, could this possibly be lye is a common name for that? I would check that in your internet. Lye, I believe, is another name for sodium hydroxide. It's, uh, it reacts strongly in water. It'll burn you. It'll burn you. Lye will burn you. It's a base. Acids and bases. We're not talking about acids and bases here. Okay, next one, calcium phosphate. Okay, calcium and phosphate is PO4. Now, I believe this was 2 minus, and calcium is plus 2. We just talked about that. So this is just going to go CaPO4. And, oh, got that one wrong. Okay. What they have for calcium phosphate, uh, PO4. Let me just double check me, PO4. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Phosphate, was that on the previous? Yeah, the phosphate was on the other side, and that was my mistake. PO4 is 3. That was where I made a mistake. It's 3 minus. This is a plus 2. 2 plus. So the, I, the rule on this one is you're going to need 3 of these and 2 of those. That's what they call the crossover rule. To make this neutral, you're going to have to have calcium, 3, and then the phosphates, you're going to need 2 of them in order to, because now... This 2 times negative 3 gives negative 6, and this 3 times the plus 2 gives positive 6, and that's how you balance it out. The reason I didn't get this right the first time through was I had this down at negative 2, and I had forgotten that a phosphate was a negative 3. It's just a matter of memorization or having the reference sheet. Okay, next one is called copper. 2 permanganate. Or permanganate, I guess. I'm not pronouncing it right, but that's manganese. And I remember the manganese, that's MnO4. And if I remember correctly, it was a minus two. And this is copper two, which is would be a two plus. Uh yeah, because that's what this Roman numeral means. It means that it's a charged state of two. Copper, uh, is that gonna be one of them that they listed? No, they're not listing that on this particular table, okay? But copper probably has more than one uh, state, charge state, when it's forming a compound. Uh, so this is probably uh, us. This would probably be, if, if, if this was going to uh, have a name where it ended with ick or us, this would probably be the us, because this is a smaller number. But anyway, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say that this is just gonna be copper magnet like that because I think each of the this is a minus two and that's plus two. Well, let me check the answer sheet. Uh, no, I got that one wrong. The reason was the permanganate, the charge state on the permanganate was only a negative one. Okay, so that's only a negative one and this is a two plus, so you're gonna need two of these. So the correct answer. Is this, but I needed the reference key because I didn't remember. See, because the bonding in here is not ionic, it's you have to memorize it. There's no way to know ahead of time. Okay. Now the last one is potassium dichromate. Okay, so that's potassium is a K. Dichromate is kind of a giveaway. Uh, chromate, dichromate. It's got to be two of them. Now chromium is plus three according to this. So, 
To balance this off, you need six. Uh, to, for potassium dichromate, it's something that I got that correct. Uh, no, 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 no. What am I saying? Chromate is an oxide. Okay, fine. So, let me take that back. It's a dichromate, but a chromate is CrO something. But what is it? Is it CrO3? Uh, here, I, I have to go back to what we've been working on. Chromate. Uh, let's see if it's one of the ones that have already... Yes, the chromate ion is CrO4 2 minus. Cr, so I got that wrong. It's O4, it's a 2 minus, it's a dichromate, so that's going to be a negative 4. So if it's going to be potassium, it looks as though it's going to, if, if it's potassium dichromate, it looks like it's going to have to be four potassiums, uh, two chromates, uh, because each chromate was a negative two. So let's see if I got that one right. No, totally wrong. Uh, because the chromate was CR207. Wow, that was the dichromate ion. Uh, yeah, I misunderstood. I took the chromate ion, CRO, let's see. Oh yeah, I took the chromate, which was CRO4, and to take dichromate, I doubled it. That was a mistake. The dichromate ion is actually CRO7. Wow. Oh, CR207, which I, I had forgotten. It was previously on our list. It was uh, listed as a minus one. No, it's minus two. Two minus. So to balance that off, the potassium, you're going to have two potassiums. So that's potassium dichromate. That's pretty hard. I would have needed the reference sheet to get that. Okay, now that's Oh, now there's more. Okay, that's we're up to section five. Supply a systematic name for the following compounds. ZNO. Well, I'm going to call that zinc oxide. Okay. And let me just check. I, I want to make sure I don't give you incorrect information here. Yep, zinc oxide. Okay. Next one. MN3P2. Well, it's manganese and phosphorus. Now, could that possibly be called trimanganese diphosphide? I'm not even sure. Let's just see what the answer is. It's called manganese phosphide. So, what I said was not bad. Because if they said that the name for this is manganese, Okay, oh, they wanted you to give that the valence state was two. So I didn't identify this as a um, ionic. Phosphorus is right over here. That's negative three. So this would be a negative six. That would have to be manganese two. If I had identified that as an ionic compound, which I should have, because phosphorus is uh, on our chart of elements that tend to form ionic compounds. Uh, and then it's phosphide. since uh, it's just the element all by itself, okay? Now, I don't think there would be any harm in calling this trimanganese diphosphide because it's the same thing, it's just adding additional information. The di and the tri, you see they added it on one of the previous ones. That's why in my, it's my contention that there isn't always only one accurate chemical formula for something or a name for something, okay? Fe2, S3. Okay, this is iron and sulfur. So once again, this is going to be uh, sulfur is right here. It's negative two. So this is got a negative six. So this is going to be a charge state of three. So I'm going to say that this is going to say ferrous, ferric, one, two, three, sulfide. Okay. This is the charge state. We see the two charge states on iron is a plus two and a plus three. This is going to be the plus three in order for this to balance, because this is a minus two. And I'm going to say that that should be ferric, but let's see what the correct answer is. Yeah, I got it. There are two possible answers for this. One of them was iron three sulfide or ferric sulfide. They accepted both of those. 
as, a, as solutions. Okay, and that gives you an example for there isn't always just one correct answer. Okay. Okay, the next one is PBS. This is like channel two. Only this is lead and this is asphalt sulfide. This is lead sulfide. Uh, sulfide, lead is not on here, but in this case the lead is giving, oh, I'm sorry, the lead is on here. Notice the lead, it's listed on this little uh, cheat sheet, you might call this a cheat sheet, as having a valence of either plus two or plus four. So we could call this uh, lead is plumbus, I believe, and that's how you get the word plumbing. Uh, this one is plus two, so this is going to be plumbus sulfide or lead charge state two sulfide. Let's see what the correct answer is. They're just calling it lead two sulfide, but I think this might also be correct, plumbus. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one is AL203. I do remember this from the slides. This was an example they gave of an ionic compound. It's aluminum oxide. Uh, this is when you when you have an aluminum door, uh, aluminum, an aluminum screen, a storm door, or aluminum screens in your house, and it starts oxidizing. It gets a white powder on it, and this is the aluminum oxide. It's like rust, like rust for iron rusts and aluminum also oxidizes, but you don't call it rust, you call it aluminum oxide. I just think it's going to be aluminum oxide. You could call this di-aluminum trioxide, but that's not conventional. Uh, aluminum, let's just take a look here. Is it on the table? No, it's not. Oh, yes it is. It's a plus three, but it uh, only gives one possible charge state. So in this case, I don't, you could say aluminum, uh, aluminum, and you could say, oh, it's plus three, you could say that, but there's only one charge state listed. So when there's only one charge state listed, I don't think you need to do that. So I'm just going to go with aluminum oxide, and that's what the correct answer is. So I got that one okay. Next one, gallium oxide. Okay, this is all like the aluminum oxide. Gallium, uh, gallium is, is not, is it on here? No, it's not. It's not on here. But gallium, uh, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna guess that gallium is somewhere in here in the transition metals. Uh, I might be wrong. Gallium, um, gallium, maybe gallium. Hmm. Well, according to this, this gallium, yeah. Let's just look at this gallium. I'm gonna say it must be. Uh, a three minus because it's combining with the oxygen which is the two minus I'm sorry a three plus and there's a three plus that's gonna put it oh I know where it is it's under yeah it's under the aluminum it's under the aluminum I remember now gallium is in uh, this uh, column three now I remember it's a and it's valence is three so th I'm, this is just gonna be gallium oxide yep got it Okay, next one is uh, MgF2, magnesium fluoride. Okay, uh, this is an ionic compound. This one is negative two, that's a plus two. Well, each of the fluorines is a negative one. It's just magnesium fluoride. Okay, next one is KMNO4. Now we've already recognized that the semino 4 we've talked about it. This is the permanganate ion, it's a negative one, apparently. I can tell now it has to be negative one because I know this is a positive. This has to be a negative. And I remember that I, this is one of the ones I got wrong. So this one is going to be potassium permanganate. And that is correct. Okay, next one is HgNO3 2. Okay, it's mercury and it's uh, nitrate. And um, a nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So this is a total charge of minus 2. So this is going to be Hg2 plus NO3, which is a minus. And then there's two of them. 
And so this is going to be mercury, uh, nit mer it would be mercury nitrate, but you can see the mercury on here, and the mercury's got two charge states. This is going to, so this could be mercury, I'm gonna say this could be mercury two, charge state two nitrate, or also known as mercurous, mercurous nitrate. No, I'm sorry, mercuric nitrate, because the charge state of two is the larger of the two possible states. So I got that one. I nailed that one. I got both possible explanations for that. So that one, I'm going to give myself an A plus on that. Excellent work. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Uh, okay, next one is HG2, NO2. Two, okay. NO two now is not nitrate. Uh, I don't think we do. We have the second two. NO two. NO three was nitrate. They gave us that. NO two. I don't remember that. Mm. Yeah, this one I'm at a loss now. I don't know what uh, NO two is called. It's not a nitrate. Nitrates. It could be similar, but okay. <clears throat> Don't know. Well, we know that NO3 is negative 1. Okay. So what's NO2 likely to be? Ah, I have no idea. Okay, I'm just going to give up on this one. We'll look for the answer on this one. HG2NO2. Okay. Okay, instead of being nitrate, it's nitrite. Okay. And what the answer is is that this is mercury. One nitrite. Okay, but now that I have the answer, I know that mercury one is a balance of one, so that means this is plus two, so this must be minus. So nitrite NO2 must also be a negative one, and this could also be known as, since it's the one, mercurous nitrate, which they don't have, but that would be another possible way of saying it. Okay, nit. Nitrite, NO2, nitrite, NO2, minus is the so-called nitrite ion, NO3, minus is the so-called nitrate ion. Okay, I should try to remember that. Okay, the next one, Br3O8. Wow. Ooh, tribromium oxa octa oxygen octa oxide. But this it, could this could this possibly be bromate? Uh, it's a compound. Uh, bromium. It's some form of bromium oxide. Now bromium. Bromium is a halogen, so this would be a negative three. So this doesn't really look like a uh, this does not look like an ionic compound at all. It's not going to satisfy these sorts of rules. So um, I'm just going to bromate. I, I might be wrong, but I'm just going to guess and take a wild guess, and I'm going to say this is bromate. No, it's called tribromide octaoxide. That's actually what I said initially, and I thought I was making a joke. Octaoxide. Or I might have said octa oxygen, but okay. I've never heard of that before. Don't know what it is. Okay, now here's the next one is P2I4. Okay, that's potassium and that's uh, iodine. So this could be potassium iodide. No, I'm sorry, my mistake. That's not potassium. I got confused because it's saw P. It's phosphorus. Phosphorus iodide. Phosphorus, this is going to. Is this going to follow the rules? No, not really, because uh, if this followed a, the typical rule of ionic uh, compound, iodine is going to have a, you have four of them, that's going to be negative four, and then this P2 would be, uh, that, that would be negative six. So this is not going to balance off. So 
This one, I don't know what this is, what this compound is, but what it would be called, you could call it diphosphor, diphosphorus iodide, or it's four, so it could be uh, uh, quad, what's, what's the, four, uh, the suffix for four? Per, uh, per magnet, per, per iodide, per manganate. Uh, quadra? I forget. I'm going to give up on that. Let's see if I answer. Tetra. That's what it is. So, yeah, that's all it is. It's diphosphorus tetra iodide. Ah, yeah, I should have known that tetra. Okay, now, let's go to the next one. Give the IAPAC symbols for the following compounds. HF. Aqueous. Now this is a giveaway. It's aqueous. This is hydrochloric acid. Okay. H2S. Aqueous. Uh, dihydrogen sulfide. A lot of these aqueous turns out to be acids, but uh, this is hydro... It's not sulfuric acid. This could be hydro... I'm going to say this is an acid because that's going to break up. I'm going to say it's hydro sulfide. I don't know. I gave up. I'm not sure. I think it's an acid. I don't know what it's called. It's called hydrosulfuric, not sulfuric acid. I know that one, H2SO4. Hydrosulfuric. Hydrosulfuric. I didn't know that. Actually, I'm not, I've never heard of that acid before. Okay, next one is H3PO4. PO4 apparently is a negative three. Uh, hydro, is this an acid? I don't know, it says aqueous. I don't think this is an acid. It might be an acid. Let's see what the answer is. It's phosphoric acid. Oh, okay, it's a mild acid. Phosphoric acid, this is what you find in sodas. This is what rots out your tea. Phosphoric. Yeah. That's one that's worth remembering. Do not drink soda. It's bad for you. Okay, the next one. HClO4. So this is going to be a hydro, maybe, a chlorate, I'm going to guess. Hydrochlorate? Acid. Certainly looks like an acid. Correct answer is no. Perchloric, perchloric acid. <clears throat> the ClO4 is apparently I did, the ClO4. I believe that was one of the ones they gave us. That was called the perchlorate ion. So calling this per perchlorate acid makes sense from that point of view. Perchlorate acid. Now the next one is NaClO3 aqueous. Uh, this is sodium chlorate. Sodium chloride? No, it's not sodium chloride. That's table salt. Sodium chloride, that one didn't come up. That commonly comes up because it's a household item. Sodium chloride, that's an easy chemical formula. This one, sodium chlor chlorate. I'm gonna go with sodium chlorate. Uh, I think we previously had to do ClO3. And the ClO3 went by the name of Did we do CLO3? Hmm, maybe we didn't. I don't see it here. No, I don't see it. So let's just look at the answer for this one. ClO3, I'm going to say it's chlorate. Sodium chlorate? Oh, yeah, they did call it sodium chlorate. I kind of got it, although I, I really haven't seen this chlorate before. 
Okay, now the very last one is HNO3. I know this one. We have mentioned this a number of times tonight. This is nitric acid. I just happen to know what nitric acid is. Uh, and NO3, that was one of the ions that we did work on. Um, is it NO3? Well, we had to write the chemical formula of nitric acid earlier. Nitric acid, yeah. NO3 is, what's, no, they, that was not in our list to, to name what, what's the name of that ion. Nitrate. Oh yeah, that is the nitrate ion. Is it? It is the nitrate ion. Okay, fine. Nitrate ion, but it's called nitric acid. So, go figure. Okay, that, it went on very long, but I just wanted to go through that, uh, just to give you some feel for <clears throat> some of these questions. Okay, thanks. That's a full hour. <clears throat>